First of all, you may want to rewrite that um, as, let's rewrite it as 3g of negative 1 minus f of negative 1. If the other notation bothers you, you may want to rewrite it this way. Okay. Now, there are two ways to do this. You can do the linear combination part. Okay. You can do 3g minus f. Get your simplified expression like we did with a and b, and then plug in negative 1. Or, yeah, I mean, this is just functional notation. g of negative 1, f of negative 1. That means you plug negative 1 into g, get an answer. Plug negative 1 into f, get an answer. Um, and then uh, combine them this way. So I'm going to do it both ways so you can see how to do it uh, both ways. So uh, first of all, I'm just going to plug them in. Okay? I'm just going to plug negative 1 into my g function. So when I do that, uh, negative 1 squared, well, let me write it out. Okay, there's g minus plugging in negative 1 into my f function. And then I'm going to simplify. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. So negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9. So I have 3 times negative 9 for the first part. Minus Negative 1 squared is positive 1. What? Oh, it's negative 3 times. This is multiplication right here. Right, yeah, you square the 1 first. So negative 1 squared is positive 1. So negative 3 times positive 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 6 is negative 1. Okay, in my parentheses here, negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5 plus 1. So overall that gives me 7. 1 plus 5 plus 1 is 7. So we have negative 27 minus 7, which is negative 34. Now, I could have also done it this way. I could have multiplied my g function by 3 and subtracted my f function. Okay, so that gives me negative 9x squared minus 18 minus x squared plus 5x minus 1. Let's distribute the negative there. Combine like terms, negative 10x squared plus 5x minus 19. Then I could have plugged negative 1 into that result. And I should get the same answer. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, so that's 10 minus 5 minus 19. So that's 5 minus 9. What did I do wrong? I did something wrong. I should get the same answer. 3 times G. Anybody see my mistake? Oh, the negative. There we go. Thank you. I had it there and then didn't transfer it. There we go. Negative 34. Same answer. If I can just keep my negative going through the problem, that would help. Okay. So, it, which are, yes. Okay. Whichever way you want to do it. It's not really shorter either way. Uh, it may be a little bit shorter to just plug it in, plug in negative 1 to both functions and then do the combination, uh, but it's just whichever way you prefer. Okay, now 
D is really weird looking. Okay, D is really weird looking. So let's look at D. We have negative F of 1 minus 2A plus 4 times G of 1 minus 2A. Now, this one, we also have the option of doing either way. Now, I personally think that it is easier since we are plugging the same expression, 1 minus 2a, we're plugging the same expression into both functions. I think it's easier to do the combination first and then plug in 1 minus 2a once. And it's for this reason, because both of these functions, f and g, both have x squared. So that means that we're going to plug in 1 minus 2a for x. That means we're going to have to FOIL it twice. We're going to have to do it for both expressions and then combine like terms. Well, why not go ahead and simplify things as much as possible and then plug it in once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach this by doing negative f of x plus 4 g of x. I'm going to do the linear combination part of it, simplify that, and then plug in the 1 minus 2a. Okay, so if I do that, I'm changing all the signs of my f of x function, and I'm adding 4 times my g of x function. So that gives me negative x squared plus 5x minus 1 minus 12x squared minus 24. And when I combine like terms, that's what we get. Okay, that's the linear combination part of this problem. but it wanted us to evaluate 1 minus 2a. So we've got to plug that expression in for x. Are there questions about the combination? Koi, sit up, darling. Koi. Hello. Okay, now I'm going to plug in the 1 minus 2a. Everywhere I see x. So, 1 minus 2a squared is 1 minus 2a times 1 minus 2a. When we FOIL that out, first gives us 1, the outside and the inside both give us negative 2a, so when we combine those we get negative 4a, and the last gives us positive 4a squared. Distribute the 5, so we get plus 5 minus 10a. And we've got a negative 25 chilling there on the end. Last thing we've got to do is distribute that negative 13. So negative 13 times 1 is negative 13. Negative 13 times negative 4 is positive 52. Negative 13 times 4a squared is negative 52 a squared uh, minus 10a minus 20. I was combining these terms down here. And then final step, let's put this in standard form. Negative 52a squared. 52 minus 10 is 42a and minus 30. That is the final answer. Yes, it is rather labor intensive, but that's how you do it.